I'm going to be reviewing the new Derwent Lightfast colored pencils and doing a demonstration with these pencils on this giraffe. Derwent came out with the Pro Color last year, and I loved the performance of those, but I was disappointed in how many of those pencils were not light fast. They so made up for it in this set. They right now have only released 36 colors, and that's not a lot of colors. You're definitely, this This isn't going to be a set right now where the, these are the only pencils you need if you're looking for to buy a brand new set. Until next year when they come out with additional colors, you are very limited with the colors available. There are a lot, a lot of creams and tans and very neutral tones, not a whole lot of bright colors. Now, on the flip side of that, the purples in this set are just amazing. I love the purples in this set. One of the common complaints I've had in the past with purple pencils is that they're a little bit muted. They're not quite as bright as I want. Purples and hot pinks. I can't get a good light fast purple or hot pink. Still don't have the hot pink, but we do have the purple now. I am so in love with the brighter purple. And then there's another color called nightshade that's a deeper dark color that I'm going to use for almost every colored pencil piece from here on out. I love those colors. So even if you're not sure that you want to go out and get the full set of these, trust me, get those purples and the midnight black that it's kind of a bluish black they're wonderful my main complaint with this set color wise is that you don't have a true red or a true blue you've got a orangey red color and then you've got a like a sky blue but these aren't blue are colors that are your basic primary colors that you can use to mix a ton of other colors from there you would definitely if this was your only set you would definitely need to pick up from another either one of Derwin's other sets maybe their pro color or with polychromos you would need others to have a true red or true blue right true blue right now that should be I'm assuming those are colors that are I mean, next year, I would hope so. But for right now, that I definitely felt limited on. When I came up with the design for this, I wanted to you do a really nighttime, like a blue background. It just wasn't possible with the colors in the set. So I ended up using the purples, which were amazing. So it, it I'm actually kind of happy I didn't have blue because I think the purple came out better than the, the original idea I had was. But just be aware, you are limited in colors right now at the time of filming this. Now, for a price, these retail for a set of 36 for $144.99. That sounds really high, but one, they're all light fast, so they're going to be cost, cost a bit more to get that kind of quality. But the other thing is that retail is not ever what you're going to really pay. When they're available in the U.S. through dickblick.com or Jerry's, I'm sure they'll all carry them, they're, we're going to see a big drop in price. Usually they sell for quite a bit less than what retail is. Right now, when I looked on Amazon, this was $115 for this set, so way less than retail. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them from from Derwent's website, but they are not, at the time of recording this video, they are not available in the US just yet. They are going to be available here in the US at the beginning of September 2018, and these will all be available open stock. So if you just wanna try out those purples, which seriously, they are on my must have list for colored pencils now. I'm so like seriously excited about it. I'm such a nerd. When I reviewed these or tested these for the first time, and you can see the live stream, I'll put a card up here so you can check that out. But the live stream where I did my first little color samples, I had never used them before. I got goosebumps. I was so excited. Like this is my dream purple pencil. I was so excited. I clearly need to get out more. And just for transparency, Derwent did send me these pencils that I'm, I'm reviewing in this video, but all of the thoughts and opinions and all that fun stuff are all my own. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where I've got the two and a half hour version of this available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get access to over 150 videos I already have over there now. You can watch immediately and a new one to two hour long Long, sometimes three and a half hours like last week long tutorial every single week if you want to check out what videos I have in my library I will have a link to that in the video description and on that page I do have a free two hour long colored pencil demonstration where I was using the pro color and Derwent drawing colored pencils this section is going to go extra fast because this was a part of the live stream so you can actually watch this in real time I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out I'm starting by adding a light blue background there weren't many blues like I mentioned earlier in this set so I was really limited I had planned on doing the entire background all in blue so I was surprised when I opened the set to find out that wasn't an option notice how sloppy I'm being on that background normally with colored pencils you do not want these lines these messy messy lines these scribble marks basically what I'm doing 
doing is just terrible technique. I wanted to test and see how well these pencils blended because I know with the pro color I can be pretty sloppy and pretty lazy and still get them to blend out really smoothly. So I wanted to see if that was going to be the case with these. And that's not necessarily something I would judge a pencil badly for if it doesn't blend out smooth if I'm being sloppy, but I wanted to find out. And as it turns out, yeah, as I layered, I was able to completely get rid of all of those really sloppy lines. So I'm coming back through again with that really light blue and I'm going to overlap that into the purple so that it'll fade nicely. I want the purple to have that lightness behind the giraffe. I didn't have to use blue for that. I could have used one of the white colors just to lighten it up. If I were to do it again, that's probably what I would do because I ended up covering the blue completely. You can't really tell blue was there at all. Now I'm going on to my next layer, and when I do blend out with the odorless mineral spirits, I let that dry completely between layers. Otherwise, you're going to damage the tooth of your paper, which is a very bad thing when it comes to colored pencil. We need the tooth so that the pencil has something to grip to. That's what's going to allow us to have a or create a lot of layers. So make sure if you're using odorless mineral spirits like I am, let that dry completely in between. So I'm going to go ahead and darken out those edges. I want to have it much lighter behind the draft, and I'm going to layer the purple into the lighter blue because I am going to make that darker than what it currently is for sure. Right now, it kind of looks like there's a moon behind him which would be a cute option, but I would have to completely change the, the lighting that I used. And if you want to use this reference photo of the giraffe, this is a photograph I took myself. I will put a link to that in the video description if you want to head over and download that. It'll be over at Patreon, but it will be free for anybody, even if you're not a member to use. I'm just going to continue layering through this. And I found I did not even need to keep my pencils very, very sharp because normally I would say keep your pencils really sharp so that you get the, the point of that lead into all of the little nooks and crannies, all of the grain in the, the paper. Here I didn't because this was my next test. I wanted to find out if this would dissolve completely into the paper so that I could just use a very, uh, I guess, dull, dull lead. And I was totally able to do that. And I, like I said, I don't want to give you the impression that if you can't do that with a pencil, it means it's a bad pencil. It absolutely does. And I just wanted to find out what these could do. So that gives me a pretty solid base. Now I'm blending with odorless mineral spirits. I'm using a Taquan bristled filbert brush for this. And that's generally the, the brush I normally use when I blend with odorless mineral spirits. Sometimes I'll switch to a smaller brush, but this is my normal go-to brush. And on my first layers, whenever I'm blending with odorless mineral spirits, I'm going to use more on my initial layers. As I build up multiple layers, I'm going to use less and less with each additional layer because if you use too much OMS on your final layers when there's already a lot of pigment on the paper, you can end up kind of lifting or sliding that pigment around in a way that you don't want. But your first layers, you can get away with using quite a bit of odorless mineral spirits on that paintbrush. So I always dry it off a bit on a piece of Viva paper towel or an old t-shirt. Those are your best options. A regular like bounty paper towel, it's too papery. It's too, it's going to absorb the OMS. OMS, if it touches paper, it will get on everything. Like it just spreads everywhere. That's why you want to use something that's more cloth-like when you are using odorless mineral spirits. You can really see how smooth that background is. And I'm going to put a couple of more layers, but look how smooth that is for how sloppy I was being in those pencil strokes. That was kind of amazing to me. And so that's one of the reasons I'm going to, you'll hear me say this all the time. These pencils are so perfect for my techniques. They work so well for how I blend. And I was able to get this done very, very quickly. If there is something that will allow me to save time but still produce the same quality, then I am going to love that product. And so that's with these pencils what I felt like. So here I'm using Midnight Black, which is kind of a blue black, and some black to get these trees drawn in. And I don't have a reference photo for this. I'm just kind of making that up as I go along. Now, when I originally drew this out, I had intended, like I usually use for colored pencils, to use either my brush and pencil, the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture to paint in white highlights, or kind of cheat and use my Derwent Drawing Pencil. I mean, normally when I do a review, I try to stay just with the pencils or just with the product I'm, I'm reviewing. But in this one, I figured I was probably going to need that, being oil-based pencils with the white pencils. They're not usually very opaque, and that was definitely not the case with these. These had a really nice opacity to them. It really felt very 
much like the Pro Color to me, that balance between wax and oil. So you can see here with that white pencil, these actually show up pretty well over the darker layers that I already have there. I'm just drawing little circles for, for these fireflies. But I completely intended or thought, expected to need to use my Derwent Drawing Chinese White to get this level of opacity. So that was kind of nice to see how light this really will make go. And Derwent Drawing still is going to be far, far more opaque than this. So in the future, yeah, that is the pencil I'm going to use. But I was it's kind of nice to see how opaque these are. And I used a combination. I actually found on future layers there was an, a color called Oyster. That one seemed to be much more opaque than the white itself was. There were a lot of really pale white and cream colors. So you have a lot of those very neutral colors. This set's going to be great for portraits in colored pencil. I'm starting to get the hint. I just need some texture in the background for the hint of where trees are going to be. Or the the leaves, I should say. Blending those out a bit. And I'm going to come back and mess with those again later and draw in more individual branches. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the giraffe. So I'm just going to break things down up one little area at a time. I'm not going to work on the entire giraffe as a whole. When I first started with colored pencil, I think that was a huge mistake that I was making. I would try to put all the brown where all the brown goes. I was working how I do with acrylics. All the brown where all the brown goes. All the purple where the purple goes. And that really makes it very overwhelming and your work generally won't come out quite quite as good. So what I'm going to do instead is just break it down into smaller sections at a time as I work through this. Whenever I'm drawing fur on an animal, I'm not going to, going to sit there and look at the reference photo and try to get every single strand the same. What I want to do is get the general movement of the fur. Which direction is it going in? How long or short should each of those pencil strokes be? Break it up into clumps and clusters with the fur as well. So I have a few individual strands of fur, but not every single one. This base layer, I'm just layering in the general lights and darks, and then I'm gonna come through once I have the white of the paper covered, and I'm drawing in a few of those individual strands on top to get that texture. You have to watch these. One thing that I did find with these, because they do, they definitely have more wax than the polychromos. I mean, I'm not a scientist. I don't know the exact percentages, but you can tell in the usage that these have a waxier feel to them. And so if you sharpen them to a very fine point, which I kept doing here, and then apply pressure, that tip of the lead is going to break. I broke a lot. I'm not talking Prismacolor level of breaking, but it's not like the polychromos that almost never break. These definitely do break a lot. So what I would recommend is don't sharpen them to quite as long of a point. That way you can still apply pressure without breaking the tip of the pencil. The breakage wasn't a quality control thing or anything like you've he heard me talk about with other brands. This was just an issue of the, the, or not even an issue, I don't think that's the right word. It's just a situation where the lead is definitely softer, but that's typical of any pencil that is going to be more opaque. They tend to have a softer lead. So do watch that as you're working with these. They are going to be more prone to breaking if you apply pressure when the lead, like how sharp that is. More likely than not, I broke that lead at some point on that pencil. <laughs> I was just using my Exacto School Pro pencil sharpener. I've since purchased another one that will allow me to adjust how sharp or how long that point is. So for these pencils, that way I will have more control over keeping that from being too so long where it would break so easily. So as I move on here, I'm just, again, layering in my general lights and darks. I'm not worrying too much about the tiny detail just yet, just getting a just getting the white of the paper covered. And the paper that I'm working on today, this is the Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. Now I'm pretty sure I'm moving more with colored pencils towards the arches. I'm just using up the rest of my Fabriano, but on this piece, I wanted to use the Fabriano since that's what I've typically tested most colored pencils on. It gave me a better idea of the performance since that's what I'm used to working on. Again, just kind of mapping this out. Where are my purples? Where are the browns and the, the kind of burgundy color there? And what I do on a case like this, 
I, I'm sure you can guess my reference photo did not have purple in it. it didn't have these colors. It was a daytime scene or you know or photograph. And so I have to make those adjustments in my artwork so that he looks like he's at night. And one of the things I'm going to do is take whatever colors I'm using in the background and you see me do this all the time when I'm painting or drawing wildlife. I take whatever colors are in the background and pull that into my subject. In this case, tons of purple. So I'm going to use tons of purple on that giraffe. I also typically will take the reference photo I'm using into Photoshop or Lightroom and mess around with areas that are dark darken up, hype up contrast, all of those things to get a better idea of what I might want to make changes on on my artwork. When I use a reference photo, I'm not necessarily, I mean very, very rarely am I trying to copy it exactly. I've already got the photo. I don't need another another copy of the photo. In this case, what I'm trying to do is improve on that photo, make the photo work with this art, something that's a bit more creative in this case with a background that obviously you're probably never going to see a scene with a purple forest and fireflies and a giraffe, but I've got to in order to create something like this, I've got to make a lot of adjustments on that reference photo. I still need a good reference photo, but I need, I want to make those adjustments in the colors and the contrast, deepening up the shadows. So here I'm using that white pencil and you can see there that gives you a pretty good example of how opaque or I guess you could call it translucent. It's not that opaque, but how much that shows over the darker colors. Now, one of the things that you may be tempted to do, a lot of artists that, that come to me that are not happy with the work that they produced, they'll show me what they've done and they don't know why it doesn't look as realistic as they want. What's happening quite often is they get to a stage like this, this level of coverage that I have on the top part of the head. Of course, they'll cover the whole piece that way, but they get to this stage and think that it's done just because they've, they've got colored pencil everywhere. The white of the paper isn't showing, so I must be done. Keep working. Look at the difference that'll happen when you continue to work. One of the most common things that create or causes an artist not to be happy with their work is that they're calling it finished too soon. Spend a few more hours because chances are that will be enough if you keep working on it, keep messing with things, keep looking at little details, little things that you can adjust or add. That can make all the difference in your in the world and creating, getting your work to look more how you want it to. It's not that those artists have done anything wrong or made any mistakes, it's just not finished yet. Now that lavender color that I put as the base on for the areas where the cream is going to go on the draft, that was actually pretty unnecessary, I found out, because when I'm going to cover it with the purple later, you're not even going to see that. And when I went on and, and shaded in the neck, I did not include that, and it looks exactly the same. You really can't tell the difference. So that is a step I would, have sh uh, would skip in the future, or if you're drawing this one, I would recommend skip where I added that lavender on the white areas, or I guess the cream areas of the face, which ended up, you can see, they ended up being so purple that I really covered that completely. So it was kind of a wasted step there. It didn't hurt anything. It was just unnecessary. I'm using dark brown and black, all kind of just really dark, dark colors on the spots that are within the shadow. And I'll switch to the brown colors once I get into the spots that are on the light side of the sky. Blending that out and look how muddy this is just a muddy muddy mess and that is okay for this stage So if you get to this stage, don't feel like oh my gosh, I've ruined it. It looks terrible It's supposed to you're just covering things up here Once you get that done, that's when we start going from here and building up the detail This is where it starts to really look good and one of the, the reasons that I will often recommend, there are several reasons, but one reason that I recommend work on one small section at a time when you're working in colored pencil is that you want to get those little wins in, those little areas that look really good. Otherwise, it can be very discouraging. Colored pencil is a very slow medium. So if you're working on something, then let's say you're working on the, the draft and you decided to do his whole, his head, his neck, everything at once, and it's going to take you days to get that done or even weeks, depending on how much time you're putting into it. And you that ugly stage, because you're working on everything at once, that ugly stage over the whole thing lasts too long. It can be really discouraging. Break it up into small sections, the horn, the ear, the eye, something smaller where you've got those areas that are completely finished or mostly finished anyway, that look really good. When you get those little wins 
wins and it makes it more encouraging to work on the rest of it and especially on something like this on a medium like this that is so slow if you can get those little things that make you just excited and feel proud of yourself and know okay I've got this I can do this that is way more encouraging than lasting for weeks before you start getting to the stage where it looks good you can do it either way that whichever you prefer but I definitely find for myself and for my students when I've worked with people in, in person it's much more encouraging if you've got those little completed areas versus a whole thing covered that looks kind of terrible for days or weeks until you get to the details that start making it look good. And then these are the details I'm talking about that do start making it look good. So I've worked on kind of the whole head at once here or, well, not counting the horns or the ears, but, or ear, you only see one here, but now I'm starting to get through this. This may be too big of a chunk. That much of the face to work on at once might be too big of a chunk. You might want to break it up into a smaller section, just the muzzle, just the cheek, just the area around the eye before, and finish that before you move on. With these, this really did go very fast though. I had, I think the entire face was pretty much done in one night and then the neck and the final details the next night. So this, these pencils, I was really impressed how quickly I was able to move through this. They were long drawing sessions, but still they, they were faster than normal. So see, I'm getting just the hint of little hairs here and there. Not too many. I don't need every hair. If I try to put in every hair, it's actually going to, and especially on a size like this, he'll look too fluffy, like he has wire hair. I don't want that. I just want to give you the, the hint of fur on his face. Their fur is very, very short, so I don't want to overdo that. I'm going through and really hyping up my contrast. My dark's darker, my light's lighter. That's another big tip. If you want to make your work look more realistic, high, work on your contrast or your, not so much your contrast, although that can sometimes be, be a huge part of it, but your values. Get your darks dark enough, your light's light enough. If they're not, if everything's kind of mid-range, it doesn't look nearly as realistic. Get those shadows in there. Don't be afraid. I think that's a, a big deal that a lot of people are afraid to go too dark. They're afraid to mess it up. But if you get things to go quite a bit darker than what you might be doing right now, that may be the the thing that will make all the difference in the world in your artwork. And I've layered both black and some purple to get these black or dark spots. The spots aren't actually black, it's just that they're so cast in shadow that that makes them appear, or I'm actually using black colors to get those spots dark enough. The black in this set, I love both the midnight black and the, I forget what they called their actual, just the black itself, but they were both really nice pencils to work in, very deep colors. I'm still going to go back through and do a bit more detailing on the face, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on the neck. Now that paper that you see under my hand there that I keep moving around, that is glassine. It is a an acid-free paper that you can get. Nothing will stick to it. So if you don't have anything to put under your hand, you can use tracing paper because you can still see through that, which makes it a little bit easier than something that's super opaque, or regular paper. Just something to keep your hand from touching the paper. You don't want the oils of your skin on the artwork itself. It's going to affect how ar archival it is. So having something under your hand is a really good idea and glassine is definitely what I recommend it's you can get a pretty good sized roll of it that will last you for a really long time at, at Amazon I will have a link to all of the supplies that I use in the video description so if you want to check any of those out they're there so this is the same thing. I'm just blocking in my general colors. I'm going to make adjustments, my lights and my darks, and see how flat things look when I just block everything in. And this is why your values, getting your darks dark enough, your lights light enough, are such a big deal. Because if you just find the right color, and that seems to be a mis mis misconception of a lot of artists when they get started, is that things will look more realistic if they just knew the right color. If they just put the right color in the right place. If you're working on a paint by number, sure. But when you're working like this, you're going to be doing a lot of layering. And it's really not as much about the color as it is your values. I mean, here, I've got a purple giraffe, but he still looks fairly realistic. Just because I've got good good shadows and highlights and I get that depth there. I make him look more three-dimensional because of that. That's what you want to worry about more. Don't get too worked up over making sure you've got the exact right color. It's not nearly as big of a deal to have the perfect color as people think that it is. The thing that's going to make it look more realistic, if that is your goal, is making sure that your darks are dark enough, your lights are light enough. Worry about those values. 
I'm adding this lavender color as a nice transition in between, actually I think it's called Heather, but I'm adding that in between the purple and that cream color so that it moves from purple into that tan cream more smoothly. And see how flat this looks without having those values in there the way that they should be just yet? When you just put the color, and it, I mean, technically, these are the right colors in the right place, but not the right values. So I'm going to go ahead and blend this out. And this is, I'm using Gamsol to blend this. You can use Gamsol. I use odorless, uh, Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner quite a bit. They work exactly the same. The Gam Gamsol is less toxic. It also costs quite a bit more. So that's um, up to you which one you want to use. But as far as performance wise, they are exactly the same. I really can't tell any difference. Make sure if you are using odorless mineral spirits to work, keep a lid on it as you work. Just take the lid off when you're actually using it and then put the lid right back on because even though it is odorless it's still toxic you don't want to sit there inhaling those fumes you just don't realize you're inhaling them because they are non-toxic or they are odorless if you have birds or anything like that i would not have them in the room while you're using that product just to be on the safe side now i'm starting to build up those really dark areas and the really light areas When I first started painting and drawing, one of the scariest things for me was getting things to be dark enough. If you look at these spots in the finished painting, that's almost black. I mean, that is a dark, dark blackish purple. It's the black and purple mixed together, but it is so dark. I never would have been brave enough to do that when I was younger. And when I started hyping up that contrast, I just kind of slowly, okay, this painting, I'm going to make my darks a little darker. The next painting, I'm going to go even darker. Once you get to where you're brave enough to do that, it makes such a difference. So I added the white, or actually it was a cream color, to go over some of the hairs on the mane. And again, there's another area where I don't draw in every single individual strand of hair. I just need a few to give you the hint of that, the hair. I, I just want some of those clumps and clusters of, of hair, not every individual strand. And you're just going to keep layering and building until it starts to look good. And this is why it's so important that you don't damage the tooth of the paper as you're working because if you do, if you flatten the tooth of the paper, if you push too hard with your pencils and flatten that out, then you can't get all of these nice layers. You want to use a light hand as you work. Do not push very hard. Unless you get to your final layers where you decide you want to start burnishing, then go ahead and push harder with the pencil. But early on, you usually want to keep a really light hand. A light hand with more layers will usually give you better pigmentation and a lot more control because you can fix mistakes and, and layer and do so much more than just burnishing straight from the beginning. And I usually will start to burnish. And when I use that term, what I mean is basically the easy answer to that is just pushing hard with the pencil and really jamming that lead into the paper, but it flattens the tooth of the paper. So when I start to burnish, it's a great way for, for certain blending, but that needs to be my final layers where I know I don't need additional layers to go on top because not a whole lot's going to stick on top of a burnished layer. You'll get some, but not like you would on a layer where you kept a light hand. Now that the neck is mostly done, I'm just going to go through and start fussing over final details. So lots of little dots. When you've got short fur, little dots are a great way to go for, for creating that texture. I'm also building up my color saturation at this point where things were just a bit too dull, so I'll layer until I get the color saturation where I want it to be. And this is why it was so important for me not to burnish too early on. If I would have, I wouldn't be able to get my color saturation. I wouldn't be able to correct that at this stage. Now, you don't always have to blend everything out with odorless mineral spirits. If you are using that, 
if you make towards the end, you'll see I use it far, far less. I don't need it because I've already got so much pigment on the paper and I do start to push a little bit harder, but you'll get to where the pencils are blending on their own just fine once you get enough pigment on there. So don't feel like every single brush stroke you make requires more odorless mineral spirits. It doesn't necessarily. It's just a matter of does it, is it going to look better if I blend it out or it does it look fine how it is? But don't feel like every single thing needs it you only really need to apply it where it's kind of getting that grainy gritty look if you want to get rid of that and really get the the pigment to set to sort of melt into the paper that's when I'm going to use the odor odorless mineral spirits to blend and that is my finished piece I definitely can say I'm absolutely in love with these pencils I can't wait for more colors to come out I have a feeling that these are going to be the, the pencils assuming that they do have a lot more colors next year these will probably be one of the main pencils that I use they were so so wonderful to work with especially for backgrounds for getting that blurry sort of out of focus background they worked well for detail they worked well for blending that looser background look so for the way that I work for the type of artwork that I'm producing these right now performance wise are absolutely at the top of my list I am so in love with them Can you hear the little house finches peeping outside they're arguing over who gets to sit at the very large bird feeder. Apparently large isn't large enough when it comes to teeny tiny birds. They want the whole thing to themselves. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round. It has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all my art videos every single week. You may also want to sign up for my email newsletter because YouTube is terrible about notifying people these days.